Alright, welcome back guys to another session. Uh, today I want to be able to do 30 minutes. Uh, that's because I screwed up with my time, man uh, time management. So I'm not able to put in the hour today. But uh, hopefully I'll do that tomorrow. But yeah, 30 minutes is fine too. Like I like to go at, at my own pace. And yeah, so this has been a nice experience so far. I like the way he teaches. He you know creates these challenges which makes the student have to think and I really really like that because uh, at least you know once our um, the, the um, student starts thinking about it it starts to become kind of part of the way they think and I think that's really good and yeah as opposed to just following a tutorial which you know it's what YouTube like basically what YouTube videos do like since they don't really um, ex I mean they do explain the stuff but they don't like challenge you in a way where you can better understand it they just say oh yeah here's how to do this and then this is what it, this does um, you know while that does help like give an introduction to the concepts and the technology being used um, I don't think it's as efficient compared to challenging the user to think about what they've just learned. I don't know, just my opinion. But all right, let's get right into it. Um, actually, first before we do that, let's review what we've done so far. I mean, we, didn't, we haven't really done much. Uh, we did edit more on the enemy prop, uh, enemy script. We're adding more properties like shot counter, and I think this is to add the shooting uh, mechanic to the enemies and yeah I think that's what we're doing right now we're, gener um, we're generating a range between these two values which will return a time on the thing and yeah and then the time will um, uh, the time will uh, decrease and then if it reaches a certain if it reaches zero then that's when they fire which is oh, I thought it would be a coroutine but I guess not so I think in the fire we'd be instantiating the prefab oh I think that was a challenge I think um, yeah I think that was the the prefab so that we placed the, the projectile in the over here and then we just instantiate it, give it a rigid body, so we can add velocity to it. So it's going to go downwards as opposed to upwards, which is what we did for our player. Um, so I don't know if it was, there was a challenge or not. It says, as we did with the player shooting, instantiate projectile and give velocity. Oh, so yeah, we were given that challenge. All right, so I think we can we can come up with. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing, right? Because I remember um, creating like a prefab for it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see if we can create a. I think just an object, right? I'll create prefab right here. All right, cool. So this is gonna be the enemy laser. Um, we're gonna add a I mean we could always just copy and paste this but I guess I kind of want to learn so we need to add a sprite render because this will be the actual sprite that's gonna represent and then we can also um, yeah let me just see beam I'm just gonna observe each one. I know I was gonna choose this one, but a red version. Uh, you know, let's go with that. Why not? Laser red. Uh, what else? I think that's good. Okay, we need to add a rigid body. I think because we we have to add a velocity to it, and then we also have to add a collider. We give it a circle collider. And then we're going to see how that is over here. I think we just go to the center. 
right? Which just is kind of difficult. So what I'm gonna do? I still don't know. Actually, wait a minute. We could have just done it like this. Uh, all right, so let's see. We're gonna edit it to match. The back part doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna make it so that if it reaches this part here, then it, it makes contact. Or maybe this part. Nah. We'll probably mess around with it. If it doesn't work out, well, we could always change it. Alright, so that's the enemy laser prefab. So then we gotta go to the uh, one of the enemies. So let's go with the green one just because we can test it out. Uh, so in our enemy script, we're gonna need a project a prefab, which will be over here. So we pass it to there, and then we're gonna. So when the shot counter reaches to zero, we're gonna instantiate um, the enemy projectile prefab, right? And then it'll be the transformed position. And then it'll be quaternion uh, identity. Right. That means it matches the the game object's uh, rotation, which basically means nothing. Like it's saying it's null or something or none. So it, like it has no rotation. And yeah, but we also got instantiate the velocity. So we have to create a game object of uh, enemy laser, and then add a oops, enemy laser dot. We want to add velocity to it, so we need to get the uh, game object dot get component Richard body. And then we want to add a velocity to it. Um, I kind of forgot what we did for that part, or that that error is just because we haven't finished it. Uh, so yeah, laser, and then we get the oh, we could just get the component of the laser. Oh, it's not we needed the game object. Eh, I don't know. And then we have yeah. I was thinking we need a velocity of some sort. Uh, the difference here is that uh, between the player shooting and the enemy is that it's not going to be a um, it's not going to be a coroutine. So, we'll, all right. So, let's see here. Um, yeah, we're going to do a new vector two, and then it's going to be zero because it's not going to be moving in the x-axis, and then we'll do. Uh, it doesn't have it here, but we'll do projectile speed, and then uh, we can place it here for now. Um, we projectile fire period. What's that? That's weird. Um, I think we did two F, right? Projectile speed is twenty F. Oh, never mind. Twenty F. Cool, cool, cool. We don't need the game object. I always thought we did. Oh, because it's already a game object. Duh. Wow. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, that makes sense. The difference between you know using a script that's attached to an object versus you know creating an object within the, the script, and then you know getting that object because this is the NA object, and we created the laser object. We wanted to access the rigid body of this object so that's why we just get an emulator so we didn't need a game object basically and yeah i think uh, that's pretty much it so does this mean it'll only shoot once no it sh shoots uh, many times but then you know shot counter can go to zero and it gets fired but then it doesn't go it doesn't go back to it so it's like negative but then, oh wait, I, I, see, I see something in the issue. Because then if it gets shot, right, then maybe afterwards we do it again, like, like this. 
because if we don't add this line of code, we're going to keep shooting. And I'm kind of curious how that looks, so we're just going to let it go for now, just for testing purposes. Uh, I want to see what happens if we do that. Please no compiler issues. Was this Richard Body? I spelled it wrong, maybe. Oh, wait. Richard Body 2D. Wait, it says. Uh, the type name space cannot be found. Are you using a directive? Is it just rigid body like that? Yeah, my bad. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's see this thing in action. Whoa, yeah, see, it's like <laughs> shooting a lot. Holy moly, what the heck? Wait, wh why is it shooting at the other end now? Whoa, that's freaky. Alright, 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 alright. I think we meant to say negative 20. F. <laughs> and then we're also going to um, do this. Wait, zombie one does have any millies. Where, where are these errors coming from? Alright, so let's see. Has not been assigned. Oh, it's because of the other ones. You know what? To prevent any, like, errors popping up, let's just give each one of them the laser just so that we don't see those red. Uh, errors appearing in our console. That's better. But still are getting errors. Object reference not set as an instance. So CS54, line 54. Why is it still shooting upwards though? That's what I'm confused. Yeah, that's what I'm confused. The negative would be going down, right? At least that's what I think. <sighs> Why would it be going up? They both go up. I think something's wrong with this. <laughs> yeah, so the reason why this, this error is appearing is because um, it's colliding with this, uh, the shredder, which activates the, the lasers um, on trigger enter, right? Um, and the, the, the thing is that the shredder doesn't have a health or doesn't have anything related to damage dealer basically so that's why it creates this error right here but to prevent this that's why I'm making sure that the, I need to make sure that the bullets are going down so that it doesn't make any other contact other than the human so let's if a positive 20 goes up let's try what the normal 20 They're still shooting up, what? Hmm. I am honestly confused. We could search for it, I guess.
So it seems like there's another way to do it. it seems uh, this line of code right here, where we add a force towards the. Um. Yeah, I think for now, um, I think that's it. I'll see what he does. So far, so good. Oh, really? Is that really the answer? <laughs> Imagine. Wow. I wonder why this is so zoomed up. Oh, that's okay. Dude, that's way too fast. Probably because there's so many enemies. Holy moly. Well, this spot's safe, so I can just stay here. Well, I guess that works. So, I don't know why. I made this negative 10, but I guess it takes the absolute value. I don't know what, what happened here. Because I, I was passing in a negative 10, but then even though it was a negative, it didn't change anything. So what I'm guessing is, is for some odd reason, but like when we're setting up, like when we're passing parameters, I guess, it, actually no, that, does, that shouldn't be it. Why would it be like that? I don't know what happened, but I guess if I need to consider that, I, I should, up, like, I mean, in a way, it is a lot better, since all we need to worry about is just changing the value, and then here, it just convert, casts it to a negative, 
so it does um, help in terms of like um, reading it faster I guess like oh so this is speed art we want it to be fa like five speed faster so we don't ha even have to worry about wait is this negative or what's positive what's going what direction we just need to worry about the speed Bec and then here it just handles oh yeah we're just gonna make it go down kind of thing uh, hopefully that makes sense because <laughs> It was just like a quick thought in my head. And that way then I guess this would be more efficient since we don't need to worry about it being a negative or not. Uh, Alright, so it got to work and I do think that 3 sec... The, what, 0 0.2 is kind of fast. Let's make it 1. So that there isn't so many projectiles happening see this oh we're still getting these errors what the heck oh I see another thing we need another shredder <laughs> that looks insane but that actually looks pretty cool <laughs> alright Yeah, I should have done that. I think I just referenced the actual sprite on the inspector, but to make it more organized, I should have dragged and dropped it into our sprites folder so that if we need to edit the properties of the image, image which of course will affect the prefab connected to it, we'll have an easier time locating it. Because then now if I have any issues and I want to, let's say, make the laser smaller or something, I would need to go through the other folders and then search it up again. Which, you know, isn't that bad, but it does take up a bit of time. And probably can add a little bit of stress, which is never good because you always want a clear thought. You always want to have a clear head when, you know, you're thinking, right? Or else you won't be able to find the solution fast. Whoa. Whoa, that's... Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's insane. But yeah, I'm going to quickly just change it to kinematic 2. So that way, uh, gravity or any other physics uh, doesn't affect it. And kinematic basically means you just want it to move without really getting affected by physics dynamic means getting being able to move but also being affected by physics and then static you don't it just stays still basically not affected by gravity and it can't be moved um, so I, I think you'd use statics on things actually you don't even need to add rigid bodies on them like what's the purpose of having a static then isn't that kind of like a um, there's no point of having a rigid body if it's static 
You know what? I'm gonna go look it up. Why static? Confused about the point of, so I guess I'm not the only one who thought about it. So let's see, maybe someone can explain it better, or not better. Uh, someone can just explain. It. I haven't even re looked at a solution. What am I saying? Uh, all right. Uh, I'm learning about rigid bodies at the moment, and I feel that I have a good understanding of the differences between static, dynamic, and kinematic types. I'm just a bit confused about the purpose of attaching a static rigid body component to a game object. That doesn't seem to be. Uh, be any difference between just slowly attaching a box collide 2D to a game object versus attaching a box collide 2D and a set. Yep, that's what I'm. That's exactly what I was thinking. For example, let's say I have two game objects in a scene, one being the ground and the other the player. Both game objects have box collider 2D components uh, attached to them, and the player game object has dynamic rigid body 2D attached to it so that it can have physics and collide with the ground beneath it. What would benefit what benefit would it be to give the ground static rigid body 2D? In what situation would someone want to use static RB on a game object? <laughs> By having it attached it's considered simulate static. By having it's considered simulated Now, I think you might be completely static tick box. Static collider. What's that sound? Uh, TLDR. Alright, sorry about that. Um, so, um, uh, this seems like a lot. <laughs> and I don't think I have enough time. I only have two minutes left. I might have to read this next time or read it on my own time. But let's continue. Because why, I do want to finish this lesson. Listen. So I think if I do want to create a level, better level, I need to make the zombies like at least go through the screen, so that at least the lasers can ha affect all parts of the area. Because when you see when uh, for mine, there's like this area over here that was untouchable. Like no no zombies were going that direction, and if they were, they'd go around it. And there'd probably be some instances where lasers would be there, but there's less likely a chance. And if I were, you know, to release a game like this, you know, players would just, you know, go over here just to, you know, just to bypass everything. So yeah, I think for a better design for the path, I would need it to go like on the side or under, or like what he did, basically. Oh wait, did I? Oh, Alright, cool, 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 cool. So yeah, so we made it just in time. It's already 30 minutes. So I just want to see if we can still shoot. Cool. Wait, did it shoot something immediately after? And we still need to get this arrow right here. I don't know if he, he mentioned it. I don't think he did. But we'll see tomorrow. So I'm going to end it here and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.